Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I was just outside making fun of some modern trend, and somebody I was with seemed to really like that thing for some reason. He chased me and was trying to kill me. I got away, but I have to lay low for a while so he doesn't find me. Texas is the episode where Sandy feels homesick and decides to go back home to Texas while Spongebob and Patrick try to cheer her up. This episode aired on March 22, 2000, and it's the first time where Sandy Cheeks sings in the series. It doesn't happen a lot, but I do think it's cool when we get to see that since she's the most notable slash well-known female character in Spongebob. The song itself, as well as this episode, features Junior Brown as a special musical guest. I remember I always saw this in the opening credits as a kid, but I had absolutely no idea where or when his part showed up in the episode. The song itself feels like something that could have been written by the veteran composers of Spongebob. Eventually, I learned that his part was the I wanna go home line at the very end of the song, but even as a kid, I thought that line was done by any of the regular voice cast. This episode also shows how furious Sandy can get when others push her to her limits, and I think that that's pretty cool to see, especially with how it's done here. Everybody has the thing that gets them pissed off when others make fun of, and Sandy just so happens to be Texas. Fun fact, this episode was also written and storyboarded by Vincent Waller, who would go on to be the creative director of the show starting with season 4, and then go on to be one of the showrunners of the series starting with episode 369, Patrick the Game from season 9. And he himself was also born and raised in Texas, which I think is a really neat little tidbit about this episode. But now with all that out of the way, let's watch this episode and see the first time Sandy sings and loses her shit when Spongebob and Patrick make fun of Texas. So the episode starts up and Spongebob and Patrick are playing in the sand at Goo Lagoon with faces on their hands. Then Sandy karate chops a pile of sand and forms the shape of Texas, only for a wave to wash it away. Sandy starts to feel sad and decides to leave and go home. Can't she just rebuild the sand shape of Texas, but farther away from the lagoon itself? SpongeBob follows her and tries to get her to do karate with him, but this doesn't work either. He then tries to get her to surf and then shows her the jellyfish he and Patrick caught. After they let the jellyfish go, SpongeBob starts to talk about home, family, friends, etc., and Sandy starts to cry over everything SpongeBob said. When SpongeBob asks Sandy why she was sad, she explains she was homesick, so SpongeBob and Patrick try to bring her back to her tree dome, which is technically her home, but Sandy gets sadder still and closes off her tree dome with a metal cover. SpongeBob and Patrick walk away disappointed and confused. And right after, Sandy goes atop her tree dome and sings about how much she misses Texas. SpongeBob and Patrick heard Sandy singing, and then they realize why she was sad the whole time and started to cry themselves after hearing more of her song. Sandy's song was heard all around Bikini Bottom, and Mr. Krabs started to cry, as well as some customers in the Krusty Krab. Sandy finished singing and goes back inside the tree dome. SpongeBob realized how much Sandy missed Texas, so Patrick suggested bringing Texas to Bikini Bottom, and worried where his genius was showing. Actually, Patrick, I think your genius was showing on the other end. Soon their surprise for Sandy was ready at the Krusty Krab, and Spongebob and Patrick went to the tree dome to get her. When they saw her, they found out she packed her bags to go back home to Texas. Spongebob tried to convince her to go to the Krusty Krab to say goodbye to everybody, but she didn't want to do it because it would be too sad. Of course it's sad, but that's the point, because it's part of life. Sandy hopped on the bus and Spongebob and Patrick were so sad she was gone. Patrick starts to ask what's so great about dumb old Texas, and Sandy came back saying not to take the name of Texas in vain. But she didn't say anything about not taking the name of the Lord in vain. Sandy's comments gave Spongebob an idea, so he and Patrick started making fun of Texas, and Sandy got more and more pissed off, eventually getting to a point where she would be on Spongebob and Patrick. Like ugly on an egg. I know that expression was from another show, but I always thought that expression implied anybody who said that was saying that apes are ugly. Spongebob and Patrick run off to the Krusty Krab, and Patrick keeps taunting Sandy, who caught up to them faster than he thought and was right on their tails. They tried to run faster, but Sandy kept catching up to them and eventually lassoed Patrick and beat that shit out of him. Spongebob got closer and closer to the Krusty Krab and finally grabbed the door, but Sandy managed to grab him with her lasso. She pulled him so tight the front of the Krusty Krab pulled off, revealing the surprise for Sandy. 
a Texas themed party featuring Texas related stuff Sandy mentioned in her song. But some of those things were a bit misinterpreted, such as thinking barbecues were barbecues. So Spino's never seen or heard of a barbecue grill, even though he works behind a grill for a living. Sandy started to laugh, but Spongebob thought she was crying again. Sandy said she appreciated the thought, but stated what home was really all about, others who care about you. She then realized that she was home all along because of her friends around her, so she decided to stay. Everybody started cheering for Sandy staying home, except Squidward, but Patrick made another comment about Dumble, Texas. Sandy got mad, Patrick considered running again, and the episode ends. So that was Texas, and I think that this is an awesome episode. But before I get to my thoughts, I do have a brief story I want to share based on this episode. Back in high school in the mid-2000s, the Disney movie Frozen was all the rage. Everybody was talking about it. Around late 2014, early 2015, there was all sorts of advertising for the Spongebob movie Sponge Out of Water. I was so excited for that movie. There were lots of TV spots for that movie. This commercial in particular roasted Frozen by saying this. And something Frozen you'll actually like. I found this funny and people in the comments were talking about it too. Now comments can't be posted here anymore, so that's a f***ing shame. But because of that commercial, I got a big head and started roasting that movie to a friend who really loves that movie. So based on the way Spongebob and Patrick make fun of Texas in this episode, my best friend and I tease her about Frozen. Basically like this. Hey Patrick, what am I now? Uh, stupid? No, I'm Frozen! What's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> We only did that a couple times, but it was still funny, and considering how much people were talking about Frozen, that was the other reason why we did it, especially because this person in particular was a huge fan of Frozen. Oh, that's why she moved away and stopped talking to me. That same year, I was also doing the regular Texas bit, but I did it around a girl that actually did really like Texas, so she told me to stop doing that around her. Considering how pissed off Sandy got, I stopped saying those lines when that girl and I were around each other. Now with that out of the way, here's the part where I talk about my opinions of this episode. As previously stated, I think it's pretty great. There are so many awesome things about this episode. Obviously, I love the part where Spongebob and Patrick make fun of Texas and Sandy gets more and more pissed off. I would say that is my favorite part of this episode, especially the part where Patrick says, What's the difference? Something about the way he says that line in particular just makes me laugh every time. A few other scenes I really like are when Spongebob accidentally grabs Don the whale and flips him over, the part where Mr. Krabs cries and gets hit by the cash register, when Patrick trips, falls, and laughs while jellyfishing, and that sight gag of Squidward not cheering at all at the end. I like how the people of Bikini Bottom all come together for Sandy in this episode. It shows how even though she's definitely the odd one out in Bikini Bottom, the citizens still care about her. Then when Sandy decides to stay, they're all happy about it. Even though Squidward didn't cheer, he was at the Texas party and still trying to help the matter at hand. It just didn't go well for him since the cue he was holding was all Barbie. Speaking of which, I do find it a little weird how Spongebob didn't understand some of the things Sandy was singing about, like the barbecues and pecan pies. Yes, I do know that things in Texas are different compared to Bikini Bottom. And while those gags are funny, it's just weird when you consider how Spongebob doesn't really get the barbecue part, especially since he works behind a grill all day long at the Krusty Krab. I know it's a different type of grill, but this grill and a barbecue are both grills. Also in episode 8, Naughty Nautical Neighbors, Patrick has a very similar grill in his backyard if you look closely enough, and it's even used in a couple future episodes. So with that in mind, it's just weird that the barbecue, of all things, is something that Spongebob misinterpreted. However, I admit that is a nitpick and I didn't think much about it until last year, but it doesn't take away from my enjoyment of this episode. Going back to the positives, I also really like how Sandy is used in this episode. I think this is a good character episode for her. I really like the song she sings here, and it's also great to hear her sing since that doesn't show up in the show often. In terms of her actual character, there's a lot more sides we see of her in this episode alone. Most of the time, we haven't really seen her get too angry with Spongebob and or Patrick. Up until this point, I'd say she would get more frustrated towards Spongebob and Patrick than anything. 
In this episode, she gets so much more furious when Spongebob and Patrick make fun of Texas, and this was the angriest we've ever seen of her as of this point in time. It's so cool when we see more about the characters we've never seen before. In addition to how angry she can get, we've seen that when she gets sad, she does whatever she can to cheer herself up. When she was homesick about Texas, she was very quick here to pack her bags and move home. If anything, maybe her rage was a little much here, but that is intentional since Spongebob and Patrick do make fun of what she is most proud of, her point of origin. Even though this is still only season 1, we've learned a lot more about Sandy here than we've usually seen about her, and I'm all for it. I think this episode is a great example of how strong of a character Sandy can be, and is another reason why fans love her so much. There is a lot to like about this episode. It's a very strong and effective Sandy episode, and it's one of my personal favorite Sandy episodes. The comedy is great, the song is beautiful, and it's heartwarming how everybody comes together to cheer Sandy up here. It's also so entertaining how angry Sandy got here, and when Spongebob and Patrick make fun of Texas. I may sound like a broken record at this point, but this is another great season 1 episode, and shows how great this series truly is. Texas is an awesome episode. The comedy is great here, and the characters are all really strong here too, especially Sandy. It's a great episode to show how dynamic these characters can be in my opinion. And as fun as Sandy's rage is here, there are definitely some lessons to learn from that. So I'd say the moral of today's story is, be careful what you make fun of. But if you make fun of something like a modern day trend that you would see on Twitter that isn't related to TV, movies, video games, or celebrity deaths, and somebody gets pissed off at you for making fun of that, well that's their problem, not yours.